living in Lake Tahoe is not all sunshine and roses. And in today's video, I'm going to share some of the worst things about living in Lake Tahoe. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time here, my name is Gabriella, and I am an outdoor photographer currently living in Lake Tahoe. On this channel, I share lots of Lake Tahoe content. And if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit subscribe. So in today's video, I want to keep it real. I love Lake Tahoe, but living here certainly has its downsides and I want to share them today. Before I get into the video, I just want to preface that this list is completely subjective and based on my own personal experience. With that, let's get into it. The first reason is what inspired me to make this video, and that is the heavy snow. So I know that the snow is a huge draw for people to come and visit or to move here. This is a huge winter activities destination. Even though I don't ski or snowboard, I love seeing Lake Tahoe turn into a, a winter wonderland. It's magical, it's beautiful, and it's one of my favorite times to photograph Lake Tahoe. That being said, the snow certainly has its drawbacks, especially if you are experiencing a winter like the one we are having right now. Some of the drawbacks to the heavy snow are number one, shoveling. This is now my fourth winter here, so I've done my fair share of shoveling, but this year is next level. On multiple occasions, we've had to get professional help to get the car out. Like it's that buried crazy. Another downside to the snow are the, the dangerous driving conditions that it creates. And even if you are comfortable driving in the snow, you're used to driving in the snow, you're on the road with people who are not so great at driving in the snow. <laughs> people like me who suck at driving in the snow, but I have gotten a lot better this year just because just I had to. Another thing that we experienced a lot this year are the power outages that come along with the snowstorms and being snowed in with no power is not fun. I did want to share a fun comment with you guys that I got <laughs> that I, I kind of made me laugh. She wrote, use a shovel. It's only winter, not enough to call in for work. I would expect a write up. You're not stranded. You know what, Lynn? I'd rather be safe than sorry, but I appreciate your comment. Moving on. Number two are the wildfires. Every summer, the wildfires affect Lake Tahoe to some degree, at least every summer that I've lived here. The one that was the worst so far was September 2021. That was the year that South Lake Tahoe was evacuated, which was a very surreal and scary experience. But even without the evacuations, just the, the hazardous air quality that the, that the smoke creates, it's not fun. Um, and it lasts for weeks, sometimes months, and beautiful Lake Tahoe just turns into this gray place and everyone's inside because they don't want to be bre breathing the hazardous air. Number three is lack of affordable housing. I mean, is there any affordable housing anywhere anymore? <laughs> for real. I do get a lot of questions about, um, the housing market in terms of buying a home and I don't have any expertise in this area unfortunately I hope that one day I can own my own home but from what I've seen I mean I see that there's like people trying to sell these tiny shacks for five hundred thousand dollars but hey people are buying it as far as the rental market goes I know that if you're looking for affordable housing it's slim pickings and what used to go for I don't know you used to be able to get a studio for like a thousand a month about three years ago, and now that same studio is probably like fourteen to sixteen hundred a month. That being said, you can find deals. You just have to be on top of it because if you see something, I mean, you got to be ready to get it because it'll go like that. Number four, limited work opportunities. I used to say that the jobs that are easiest to get in Lake Tahoe are the service and hospitality jobs, but I don't know. I I don't even. I don't even think those are so easy to get anymore. <laughs> there just doesn't seem like there's a lot of jobs in Lake Tahoe, even in the service and hospitality industries. Another way I notice people are making money are Airbnb are through real estate. Like if they're Airbnb their place out, that's another uh, popular form of income in Lake Tahoe. And then of course, if you have the option to work remotely, I'm a freelance photographer and freelance is, is very unstable. You know, I have little passive streams of income, but you know, I'm all about that second, that second job, that side hustle. So especially living here. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is dry skin. <laughs> this one makes me laugh because it sounds silly, but um, you know what? I will take dry climate over a humid climate any day because 
yeah, living in a place that's really humid, I don't really enjoy that. Lake Tahoe is incredibly dry and the dry air and the high altitude, it's really rough on your, your, your skin, your eyes, and your sinuses. I don't know, I was traveling, I wasn't, I, I wasn't in Lake Tahoe for a month or so, a couple weeks. I was out of Lake Tahoe and I came back and it took me about a month to acclimate to this dry air. I was just waking up every morning with a bloody nose. So it's not a deal breaker, it's an inconvenience, but it's worth mentioning. The next point on the list of worst things about living in Lake Tahoe are the tourists. To say that Lake Tahoe gets a lot of tourists is an understatement. Lake Tahoe is a beautiful place and as a result, people wanna come visit and hey, we're all tourists somewhere, but you know, when you're living in a tourist destination, I'm not gonna lie, it can certainly get a little bit annoying. Summer weekends could be a nightmare, parking fills up by 9 a.m. I used to live in State Line right across from Heavenly Village and uh, Rayleigh's over there, if you're familiar with it, and on a summer weekend, like I couldn't even get parking to go grocery shopping. Like it, it really does get crazy. But yeah, I guess that's the price you pay for living in a gorgeous location. And you figure out ways to circumvent the crowds. For example, arriving to a place early or just avoiding the weekends altogether, which is what I usually do, especially in the summertime. This was a new one that I added to the list. Increased exposure to UV rays. And this is something that I noticed over the summer, this particular summer. With the high elevation, your skin is more at risk. This past summer, I, I literally was putting on sunblock every every 20 minutes at the beach. It felt very intense. For the first time ever, I got like this sun rash on my chest, which I had never experienced before. And I talked to some friends who also noticed just how exposed you feel. Like you, you really, really need to be extra diligent with the sunblock when you are living in a place like Lake Tahoe that is very sunny, dry, and high elevation. And the last one on the list that I'm gonna talk about, which always seems to annoy people for some reason, is that Lake Tahoe can be an isolated place. I know that this point depends on your personality. If you're like a friendly, extroverted person, you know, this might not be an issue for you, but a lot of people are transplants here. They they moved here as adults. They don't know people, I like including myself. I moved here by myself. I didn't know anybody. So this is a question I get asked a lot like, "Oh, how do you how do you meet people in Lake Tahoe?" And for me, I met a lot of people on Instagram. I know that sounds weird and I never became friends with people on Instagram when I lived in New York or LA, but here, most of the people I know, I met on Instagram. And then of course you can meet people, you know, going out to the bars or at your job. That's been my experience. It can feel isolating. And that's how I met most of the people that I know. It's also, I feel like it's, it gets, it's like physically isolating too, because you're, you're living in the middle of the mountains, but Reno Airport is right there, so it's only an hour away from South Lake Tahoe. It's an international airport, and you can go visit whoever you want if you want to get out of Lake Tahoe and take a little break, and that's I do that a lot. So those are some of the worst things about living in Lake Tahoe. Just to recap, number one is the snow, number two are the wildfires, number three, lack of affordable housing, number four, limited job opportunities, number five, skin and sinus issues due to the dry air, number six, tourists, number seven, increased exposure to UV rays, and number eight, isolation. These reasons have not scared me out of Lake Tahoe just yet, but you know, still here. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.